Now our closer look at Florida Senator Marco Rubio. This week, the GOP star making what could be his biggest move yet towards a run for the White House, including a key stop in New Hampshire. And John Carl was there with him. What's going on, Senator? Good to see you. Good to have What's you. happening? Thanks Welcome to New Hampshire. We caught up with Marco Rubio in Manchester, New Hampshire, his first foray to the first in the nation primary state since the last presidential election. It's likely to be the first of many. Rubio is doing everything he needs to do to prepare for a presidential run, campaigning for Republicans across the country, hiring national staff, raising lots of money, and even writing a book on his vision for America. It seems obvious you're moving closer to running for president. I've openly said in the past that it's something I'll consider at the end of this year that I'll look at a number of factors, personal factors, but also uh, whether I could best promote this message and, and actually put in place these ideas that I want to see put in place, whether I could best do that from the presidency as opposed to the Senate. He told us if he decides to run for president, there is no backup plan. The day he announces he is running, he would announce he is not seeking re-election to the Senate. If I decide to run for president, I will not have some sort of exit strategy to run, to run for the Senate. It, that, that, so that will be a decision not to run for re-election. Yeah, I believe that if you want to be president of the United States, you run for president. It's all or nothing. You don't run for president with some eject button in the cockpit that, that, that allows you to go on an exit ramp if it doesn't work out. Do you think you're ready to be president? I do. I mean, but, but I think that's true for multiple other people that would want to run. I mean, I'll be 43 this month, but, uh, but the other thing that perhaps people don't realize, I've served now in public office for the better part of 14 years. And most importantly, I think a president has to have a clear vision of where the country needs to go and clear ideas about how to get it there. And, and I think we're very blessed in our party to have a number of people that fit that criteria. But you think you're ready, you think you're qualified, you think you have the experience to be president if you make that decision? I do, but I think we have other people as well. I think, in essence, yeah. I think our party is blessed to have a number of people in that position. And the question is, which, whose vision is the one that our party wants to follow? Senator Marco Rubio. Just over a year ago, Rubio was considered an early front-runner, young, Hispanic, and a Tea Partier who could appeal to moderates. Time magazine called him the Republican savior. But his star has faded some. In one New Hampshire poll he led last year, he's now 10th, behind even Donald Trump. What's happened to Marco Rubio? It's probably the Time cover jinx, just like the Sports <laughs> Illustrated Sports jinx, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, polls are everywhere all the time. I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. If you decide to run for president, there's going to be a campaign. And in that campaign, you're going to interact with voters, and you're going to explain to them where you stand. And, and those numbers can change one way or the other. The miracle of America is still alive. Rubio took a beating for conservatives over immigration, working with Democrats like Chuck Schumer to pass a bill last year in the Senate that beefed up border security, but also provided a path to citizenship for many of the 12 million illegal immigrants now in the U.S. The conservative National Review called that Rubio's folly. You just gave a, a big speech at the Republican spring meeting. You didn't even talk about immigration reform, didn't come up in your, in your speech. Have you given up on this? No, I also didn't talk about Libya, and I didn't talk about Ukraine. I didn't talk about other elements that are important. I mean, there's a lot of issues going on in the country, and immigration right now is not at the forefront. I remain convinced that we need to do something serious about our immigration problem in this country. And the party? And, and well, both parties, I think, have a responsibility. We're not going to grant blanket amnesty to 12 million people. We're also not going to round up and deport 12 million people. So that issue has to be dealt with in a reasonable but responsible way. Lately, Rubio spends more time talking about the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya. There have already been 13 congressional hearings on the attack, but this week, House Republicans launched a new special committee to investigate further. You've had several investigations in the Congress. The administration has his investigations. Do we really need another committee investigating yeah, no Benghazi? No one's been held accountable. I mean, who's been held accountable for what happened in Benghazi? This administration has a tendency on foreign policy issues in particular not to worry nearly as much about what to do and to worry more about what to say. And they decided not just to mislead the American public, but to mislead the families of these victims as to exactly what had happened. But you have the Republican Party raising money off this investigation. Is that appropriate? I would prefer that we would focus not on the fundraising elements or the political elements of it. Well, they I would hope they would. And here's why. Because I think it takes away from the reality of how serious a situation this is. How big a problem is this going to be for Hillary Clinton? How much is this well, going to be used if against she's her? Gonna, if she, I'm sure she's going to go out bragging about her time in the State Department. She's also going to have to be held accountable for its failures, whether it's the failed reset with Russia or the failure in Benghazi that actually cost lives. So what grade do you give her as Secretary? 
Secretary of State. I don't think she has a passing grade. Um, in fact, if you, you think look she's at, an F? Yeah, because if you look at the diplomacy that was pursued in her time in, in the State Department, it has failed everywhere in the world. So here's what I would say. If she is going to run on her record as Secretary of State, she's also going to have to answer for its massive failures. This week, the White House released a dramatic new report on the dangers of climate change. Climate change is already affecting Americans all across the country. Miami, uh, Tampa are two of the cities that are most threatened by climate change. So putting aside your disagreement with what to do about it, do you agree with the science on this? I mean, how well, big a threat is climate change? Yeah, I, th I don't agree with the notion that some are putting out there, including scientists, that somehow there are actions we can take today that would actually have an impact on what's happening in our climate. Our climate is always changing. And what they have chosen to do is take a handful of decades of research and, and say that this is now evidence of a longer term trend that's directly and almost solely attributable to man-made activity. You don't I do buy, not agree with you that. Don't buy I don't know of any era in world history where the climate has been stable. Climate is always evolving and natural disasters have always existed. But let me get this straight. You do not think that human activity, the production of CO2, has caused warming to our planet? I do not believe that human activity is causing these dramatic changes to our climate the way these scientists are portraying it. That's what I do not, and I do not believe that the laws that they propose we pass will do anything about it, except it will destroy our economy. It's talk like that that Rubio hopes will appeal to the conservatives he'd need to win the Republican nomination. For this week, Jonathan Carl, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Our thanks to John. Coming up in less than two minutes, Monica Lewin.